Carlos Sainz claims an emotional victory at the Mexico City Grand Prix. But it is once again all eyes on Max Verstappen and Lando Norris after the Dutchman receives multiple heavy time penalties for separate incidents with the McLaren driver. From Racing News 365, my name is Nick Golding and I'm delighted to be joined as always by lead editor Ian Parks. Ian, Carlos Sainz, phenomenal. What a performance and it feels horrible that we're not going to start with him. In fact, we're probably not going to talk about him for the first 10 minutes because we have to start with Max, with Lando. And actually from the very beginning, Max made an excellent start from second on the grid, led into the first corner, did the thing that we said he needed to do, be leading the first lap. Of course, there was in the safety car period following the crash for Yuki Tsunoda and Alex Albon. Lap nine, though, was the crucial moment that kind of kick-started everything in a way. Carlos Sainz getting back past Max into turn one, using DRS, a bit of a dive bomb from the Spaniard. But then turn uh, lap 10, turn four, Lando on the outside of Max. Almost a repeat, it looked like, for one moment from last weekend's race at the Circuit of the Americas. However, the stewards judged Max as having forced Lando off the circuit based on the conditions that Lando was, and this is the wording of the stewards, ahead at the entry, apex and exit of turn four, resulting in Max getting a 10 second time penalty and two penalty points. However, just a few seconds later at turn seven, yes, Lando left the door open. However, Max steamrolled into the corner, dive bomb Norris. Yes, the stewards recognised that Max was ahead at the apex of the corner, clearly wasn't going to make the corner and didn't do so, which also forced Lando off the track. Another 10 second time penalty as a result for Verstappen, 20 seconds in total, meaning that P6, Lando P2, his lead in the title has gone from 57 to 47. Is it fair to say that actually, after everything we've spoken about the last couple of weeks, the title fight might be on after all. What's left for me to say, Nick? You've just well, summed everything up in about two and a half <laughs> minutes. You've, you've just gone through it all. And whatever I say now is like redundant almost, mate. So uh... a, a quick debrief I gave. You can give the details because, I mean, it was... Where do you start? You start by saying that absolutely Max Verstappen did make a superb start. Let's... Let's nail that one first of all, because yeah. that beautiful half mile rundown, I talked about it in, in Saturday night's update about how I love the start of the Mexico City Grand Prix because it does lend itself to just the most fantastic racing going into that turn one. And he absolutely got the run on Carlos Sainz. Um, then, of course, we had a six lap safety car because of the incident that happened further down the pack. Yeah involving Yuki Tsunoda and Alex Albon, which we will touch on a little bit later. Yeah. But then we saw the effect of the DRS. We saw the offset between the pace of the Red Bull and the pace of the Ferrari uh, that, that allowed Carlos Sainz to make a, a reasonably comfortable pass on Max going into turn one on, I think it was lap eight, uh, the start of lap eight. And then two laps later, pretty much all hell broke loose between Max Verstappen and Lando Norris. And then some. And, I, <laughs> and then some. And I pretty much know that whatever I'm going to say now, a load of people are going to pick up on. They're going to write in the comments section below, as they did after Saturday night's update, including us of Brit Bias, not giving Max Verstappen enough credit. Well, do you know what, do you know what folks? I've given Max plenty of credit across the course of this season. I've praised him to the hilt, exalted him as a three-time F1 champion. And if I have an opinion where I feel that Max, you know, deserves a bit of criticism, then I'm in, within my rights to give that. And on this occasion, I'm going to give Max Verstappen criticism because for me, both of those penalties were absolutely nailed on by the stewards. I'll offset it by the fact that and Max mentioned it as well, that he is driving a Red Bull at the minute that is just nowhere near up yeah. to standard. Certainly, uh, what I mean by that is it's not up to the standard of uh, Ferrari and McLaren. It's lacking pace. 
quite clearly. And that is why he came under attack from Lando Norris, well, Carlos Sainz, first of all, relatively easily, that pass, as I've just mentioned, and then Lando Norris on lap 10. <sighs> Deep breath. It was, for me, it was a case of Lando producing a good move around the outside. And the stewards have called it. Look, with the penalty last week in, in the United States, they, they forgot to apply the letter of the law. And they've quite clearly stated that, and as you've mentioned, quoting from the stewards document, that Lando, in this case, had the apex on entry, midway, and exit. Yeah. And he was forced off the track by Max Verstappen's defence. And he got, by the letter of the law, the 10-second time penalty. For me, the fact that he got the two penalty points for that incident and not the one that followed is probably the only surprising factor because, for me, having lost the position to Lando, Lando obviously re-entered the track having taken the lead from Carlos Sainz but immediately gave that position back and then held station over the next few seconds going into the fast sweep that begins with turn seven through turn eight. And for me, red mist. It was a red mist moment from Max. He, he was quite clearly annoyed at what had happened at turn four. And he dive bombed, as you rightly use the phrase, into turn seven. And you've only got to look at the onboard to quite clearly see he was never, ever going to make that corner in a million years with the speed that he was carrying. And he obviously forced Lando off the track again, but he gained a, the advantage, yeah. failed to give the position back, and hence another 10-second penalty. For me, that was the worst of the two incidents because of the speed that he was carrying into turn eight, at that, or turn seven, and then out of, uh, out of turn eight. Yeah. Two slam dunk penalties. Max deserved them both on this occasion, deserved the 20 seconds, but he is at present fighting with one hand tied behind his back because of the lack of pace in the RB20. And the rate things are going, we are going to go into the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. And you asked me the question right at the very start of this after uh, your earlier words as to whether we've got a title fight on our hands. We have. It's 47 points. Lando still has to take a significant number of points yeah. out of Max over these Grand Prix if he's going to become world champion. I don't think he will. I still think it's having to come from too far back. A little bit like Max is moving to turn seven in many respects, but that's a comparison for you, which I'm sure I'm going to get slaughtered for again by uh, numerous people in the comments section. But as I say, that's up to you folks. Do what you want. I don't care. I'm just voicing my opinion uh, and I'm entitled to it, just as you guys are in the comments section. Yeah. So feel free to post your, post your comments. Just make them nice and clean, though. Don't resort to insults or anything like that because... I don't pass on insults in what I'm saying here, and I don't expect to be insulted back, as some of you guys have chosen to do. So drop that one. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so it's 47 points at the minute. Lando's taken 10 points out of Max today. So we've got four Grand Prix left, two sprints, and um, it's, it's not all to play for, but there's still plenty to play for in Lando's corner. But... Boy, he's going to have to go some over these next three Grand Prix in Brazil, Las Vegas, and Qatar to really send it uh, to the checkered flag at that final race in Abu Dhabi. And of course, Brazil as well, just next weekend or at the time of this coming out this weekend, because this is going to go out early hours of Monday morning. That being a sprint weekend is going to paint a bigger picture of just whether this title fight really is on. And just so you know as well, obviously, for those who are watching this video, please let us know in the comment section below what you think of the penalties. And let's try and keep it positive. We want to build a brilliant F1 community full of interactions and debates. We are more than happy with to debate. One thing we will not accept is negative comments and insults. We try to do the best we can. 
simply, if you don't like what you're seeing, don't watch. Thank you very much. Let's move on swiftly because what's really interesting is that these two incidents come, you know, 48 hours or so after the discussion between the FIA and the drivers regarding the incident that happened between Max and Lando in Austin, Texas last weekend. For this now to have happened, and arguably in a more severe way, not once, but twice, you do have to think that actually the FIA now might need to adjust these rules even quicker than they were originally planning to do because we've seen similar incidents like this happen in the past in Sao Paulo, 2021 between Max and Lewis. We can't really afford now for the same again because quite clearly the FIA are going to go by the letter of the law when it comes to awarding the penalties for such incidents. Yeah, the surprise for me is that everything that's been suggested by the drivers coming out of that driver's briefing on Friday is that it's going to be Qatar that the FIA are going to yeah. conjure up these uh, a rewording of the uh, driving standards guidelines. As I've mentioned before, it's a document that's not privy to the public or to us, the media, unless we've been given a backhanded copy. Um, you know, I, I appreciate that we can't really get it in place for next weekend. It's a bit too yeah. short notice, but then we've got two weekends off before we go into Las Vegas. So why can't we get it in place for Las Vegas? Why is it going to be Qatar that they're going to come up with this rewording of, uh, of as I say, these driving standards guidelines and the do's and the don'ts? Because quite clearly something needs to be done a lot quicker than Qatar, as far as I'm concerned, based on the uh, on what's happened yeah. in today's Grand Prix. And it's not just Max and Lando that we need to look at as well, because we had the incident between uh, Sergio Perez and Liam Lawson, which I know we're going to touch on. Yeah, Very similar in some respects. Those two guys actually came together in quite a severe manner that led to Checo's car being severely damaged and him losing 60 points of downforce on that Red Bull when they were squabbling over 10th position. So... Again, and it was to the same corner. It was into turn four, yeah. uh, coming out of turn five, turn six, uh, that little complex there, uh, as we saw with, with Max and Lando. Um, so it's definitely something that's, in a short period of time, reared its ugly head and is now needing to be addressed far swifter, you would have assumed, than... The Qatar that's been, that, and, and as I say, Qatar that was been mentioned yeah. as to when we're going to likely get some sort of clarity on all of this. Um, yeah, a lot for the FIA, the stewards, and the drivers to discuss, probably yet again in Friday's drivers' briefing ahead of the upcoming Sao Paulo Grand Prix. And a lot for us to discuss and process. And just sticking with Red Bull, even if Max and Lando hadn't had these coming together, quite clearly Red Bull did not have the pace. Max did brilliantly in qualifying, despite obviously the power unit, the floor problems, the grip problems. The grip problems returned, obviously, in the race complaint of simply no grip. But Red Bull clearly still do have this problem, even if it weren't for the penalties, would have finished at best fourth. So you still would have suffered a loss to Norris in the championship. And you mentioned obviously a few minutes ago that, you know, Max is in a race with one hand tied behind his back at the moment, because also Sergio Perez is simply not there to support him. Of course, a big weekend for Checo being his home race. And it appeared he'd made a, a quite remarkable start, five or six places made in the first lap by Checo. However, that was because he didn't jump the start, but he started the race in front of his uh, grid blocks, a uh, grid blocks, grid box, resulting in a five second time penalty. And then, as you mentioned there, the incident with Lawson, no further action by the stewards, but resulted in massive floor and side pod damage for Checo, who finished, well, basically at the back. It was at the back, but I, I mean, a nightmare for him. He said himself that when asked if it will be his last Mexican Grand Prix, zero chance. He said he'll absolutely be back next year to try and win again. It's his dream. But I mean, for Red Bull, the two drivers they probably don't want to collide are Perez and Lawson. That is exactly what happened. Well, you look at the entire Red Bull family across the day. <laughs> you had Sonoda that crashed in qualifying. Yeah. Crashed, in, crashed into uh, Albon uh, or you know, collided with Albon yeah. in the run down to turn one at the start of this race. And then you had the incident with uh, Max and Lando. And then you, as you say, you have Liam and, and Checo Perez. 
So what an absolutely wretched day all in all for the Red Bull family. And Pacheco Perez, of course, he's going to say those kind of things. Of course, he's going to say, yeah, I'm going to be back next year. You know, this is a race I want to win. Well, not the way you're performing. I mean, we, we've talked about Checo Perez on numerous occasions across the course of this season so far, and it's getting worse. You've got to think, rewind it back, butterfly effect, and to, to miss your grid box, not just by a small fracture, we are talking a significant amount. This, this looked like it was at least a good three, four feet over the line. Yeah, at least. It, that was amateur. That was rank amateur from Checo Perez. And the five second penalty then has the knock on effect. And as I say, butterfly effect, it trickles across throughout the Grand Prix. Then he ends up in this battle with Liam Lawson. And it was one of those where you kind of felt they're fighting for that seat for next season in some respects. And neither of them came out of it particularly well. We've spoken highly of, of Liam, of course, what he did last season in the five race stint, standing in for an injured Daniel Ricciardo. He's, he's made a, a decent start uh, to stepping into that RB seat. And then, but he let himself down in, in, in many respects with that incident with, with Checo today. Uh, he, and then he let himself down even more by giving Checo, and I don't know whether people are aware of this, um, when he, uh, later in uh, later in the race, he gave him the middle finger when he did pass him. Yeah. And it's something that he's since apologised for. Yeah. Because that's totally unbecoming of what you would expect of a driver that you are thinking could be in the Red Bull seat for next season. You know, you have to handle yourself in a far more dignified fashion than Liam did in this Grand Prix. And again, you could argue, and I've used the, I'll use the phrase again, a bit of red mist. I use the phrase for Max. I'm going to use it for Liam. I, th I felt there was a bit of red mist descended in behind Liam's visor there with regard to what he did to Perez, because there was no need for that. He has apologised for it, but even so, it shouldn't do it. No, as I say, not when you are looking to be yeah. the next driver uh, alongside Max at Red Bull next season. Shall we finally speak about Carlos Sainz and Ferrari? Because we, let's, let's talk about what a great <laughs> weekend it has been for oh. Carlos. Because, you know, coming out of Austin, having finished second to Charles Leclerc, Carlos is saying that he, he just wants one more win with Ferrari before joining Williams. He's now done that. And to be honest, you wouldn't write him off potentially winning another based on how red hot he has been now over the last few rounds. Was brilliant in qualifying, just as brilliant in the race with a great move on Max. Yes, OK, Lando had excellent pace in the latter stages, but Carlos, a really controlled performance to claim what looked like quite an emotional win for him, given his entire family were there cheering him on. It's been a great weekend. Um, I, I did say after Friday's update that I suggested Carlos was the one yeah. to watch. And he, he just, it's one of those weekends where you, you can see from the get go when a driver is on it from the start. And this was one of those weekends, even through FP2. And the Pirelli tire test, he, he looked on it then because, quite regardless of whatever tires were being used, he had the pace on all kinds of different rubber uh, through that session, and delivered a great qualifying. Uh, the only driver to dip under seventy six seconds for a lap in the one fifteens, um, beat Max, but you know Max did superbly, and again. You know, talk about Max and the performance that he did. He he he's had a, a wretched weekend as Max, and he did he delivered superbly for second position on the grid. Yeah. Um. But Carlos has had a tremendous weekend, and let's specifically focus on him. You know, he's it's been a really difficult season for Carlos from the outset. Without before a wheel had turned in anger. 
he knew that he was going to have to go through 24 Grand Prix, knowing at the end of those, he was going to be out of it. For many people, in whatever walk of life, whatever profession you might do, knowing that you've given everything that you have done of yourself to your team over the previous few years, to then be, to then knowing you are going to be out of that position at the end of this particular year, that's tough for anybody to take. But do you know what? Fair play to him, Nick, for what he has delivered yeah. over the course of this season. And he fully deserved that Grand Prix victory today. It was, it was on merit. It was a top class performance. And as you say, an emotional one because it was in Mexico. Obviously, yes, not his home country, but quite obviously a Spanish speaking country. So it meant a lot to him because he knew outside of Checo Perez, he had the support of the majority of that audience around the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez. Uh, great cheers for him, you know, when he stepped out of the car on the podium and a fully deserved and merited victory. And yes, as you rightly point out, with the way Ferrari is performing at the moment, there is every chance that he could win another Grand Prix before the end of this season and he departs to Williams. And the big thing, of course, whilst it wasn't a 1-2, it was a 1-3 with Charles Leclerc in third, also with the fastest lap. With Lando in second and Oscar Piastri finishing eighth, Ferrari has jumped Red Bull in the standings to second and is now only 19 points behind McLaren. 29. 29. 29, 29. My poor maths has let me down today. I haven't got it wrong with the live blog, so we're doing really, really well. But nevertheless, the fight is very much on there as well. And that's something we will speak about in a lot more detail in Monday's podcast, which will come out in about 10 hours time. Uh, very quickly, Mercedes will also cover in the podcast as well for those who want to know some more about that. Let's mention finally, Fernando Alonso, because obviously his 400th race start, not the day he would have wanted, obviously retired early on with an issue with his Aston Martin, but nevertheless, a, a remarkable achievement by the two-time world champion to reach 400 race starts. It was 400 entries. Entries. I'm just going to correct you again there, mate. It's so, for, me, for me, I always look at starts, Grand Prix yeah. starts. Okay, yes, he entered a Grand Prix weekend and for whatever reason, he was unable to take the race start. For me, his 400th Grand Prix will be when he competes in Qatar. So it's, it, I know you can look at it however way you want to. And some people say, yeah, this was his 400th. Well, yes, it was the 400th Grand Prix he entered, but his 400th Grand Prix in which he will compete, and for me that's the more relevant one, will be the one in, in Doha, the, the Qatar Grand Prix, the penultimate Grand Prix of this season. So I know that a lot's been made of, of this weekend. Yeah. And it being the 400 and rightly so, it's it's a huge landmark moment. So hopefully we'll do the same again uh, in Qatar. And <laughs> in we the diary. Look at that one. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully, because it's not been a great weekend for Fernando, it's been an absolutely no. wretched one. So hopefully that one will produce something a little bit better for him because he deserves it without a shadow of a doubt. The career he's had, the longevity, to maintain uh, this level of performance, this level of fitness at the age of 43, at this, uh, at this rare level of motorsport, this elite level of motorsport is quite something. So as I say, Qatar Grand Prix, fingers crossed, Fernando can pull something out there and give us something more positive to write about than his 400th entry in this race. On that note, just to quickly go through the top 10 from the race, very quickly, Carlos Sainz claimed victory ahead of Lando Norris and Charles Leclerc, who completed the podium. Lewis Hamilton in fourth for George Russell in fifth. Another lonely race for Mercedes. We'll touch on that in the podcast. Max Verstappen recovered to P6. Kevin Magnussen in a superb P7. Oscar Piastri from P17 to P8. Nico Hulkenberg in P9. And Pierre Gasly picking up a point for Alpine in p10 the only thing left to say is thank you to all those 
who have been with us in these horrible hours of the early morning, not just this weekend, but also last weekend for the US Grand Prix. Thankfully for those in Europe, we're back to somewhat of a normal time zone next weekend in Brazil. Be sure to like this. It's it's more normal. It's a bit more normal. Slightly, mate. We're still, we're still, I'm not complaining because I love the job, obviously. But yeah, we're going to be getting to bed at midnight instead of 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Slightly. I'll slightly take that. Familiar. Yeah, yeah, I'll take that. It's a, small, <laughs> it's a small win compared to these two weekends, that's for sure. We take any wins. Be sure to like this video. Please subscribe to the channel because less than 90% of you currently are on top of that. Give us your questions below in the comment section for our podcast, which we will be recording, as I say, in about 10 hours time. This has been the post Mexico City Grand Prix race F1 update from myself and Ian. We'll see you in the podcast in a bit. See you later. As always, take care, folks.